In this first module, we're going to get an overview of C++. Then we'll move into installation of the IDE. So it was created by Borny Strasse, and this was back in the early 80s. And the way he did it was to add object orientation to C, basically. That's a, a very simplified version of how C++ came into being. Now let's look at what C++ actually is. So it's very fast. It's used all over the place, so a lot of software is created in C++. It's got a very big community as well. And it's not too difficult to learn. And when I say not too difficult to learn, I guess it depends on how far you want to go with it. But to get up and going with C++ to understand the syntax, how to create classes and functions and create a usable program, not that involved. It's probably similar to many other languages in regards to its level of difficulty in learning. And also, it's preferred language for creating operating systems and for doing low-level programming because it's not like, say, assembly language where you really are pushing bits around. With C, you're above that stage, but you're below something like, let's say, Java or C Sharp, for example. Now, a few features of C++ include it's procedural. So by procedural, it's kind of like if you've written in any Fortran programs or basic programs, you have that sort of top of the page writing down to bottom of the page flow of control. And also it's object oriented, so OO. It is extensible, so you can add libraries to see different other components can be added to see that you create basically extending the language. And it's statically typed, so we're going to do type checks before the program is even executed. Now, getting into a few examples of what was built with C++, we kind of now really get to see the power of C++ and how pervasive it is out there in the real world. So we have web browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera, all built with C++. As well, the Java programming language, Microsoft Office, Adobe products, so a lot of the Adobe products, Photoshop, Illustrator, and a number of other ones as well in their product lineup. There's Amazon.com, YouTube. Now, not all of these websites were built with C++, of course, but a lot of the components used within them were. Also, PayPal. Getting into a comparison between C and C++. So this is what is inside of C++ that is not inside of C. So there are references. There's also virtual functions, the C++ standard library. So this is a library built into the C++ language that gives you a lot of uh, different kinds of functionality. There is also exemption handling. And so that is an overview of what C++ is. Now we're going to get into installation of the IDE and look at a few other IDEs as well that can be used for creating C++ programs. We're going to look at a few different IDEs and I'll show you the one that I'm going to be using in the course. So all these IDEs are cross-platform so you can use them on different operating systems and they're also free. So we're going to look at code blocks. And this is not the one I'll be using. Um, I'll show you that one kind of towards the end. So this is a very popular one. You can see an image of it over here. You can click on downloads and go to the download section and use code blocks. Now, if you're on a Mac, one of the problems I've noticed with a lot of these IDEs is getting the debugger to work. So where you can set a breakpoint and step through your code seems to be a little bit problematic on a Mac and really it centers around the GDB so the debugger and the way to solve it is to code sign that debugger. Now you may not even have this problem on your Mac it's kind of a quirky thing I don't know exactly what makes it occur but that's one issue you can run into I could not get my Mac to work with code blocks so I kind of backed out of that one now there's also code light, and here we are, so codelight.org, similar as well. 
and you can download for your particular platform. But again, this one here, I did have issues with the debugger and simply couldn't get it to run through the debugger. Otherwise, it did work fine. So they have screenshots and different things if you want to look at code light to see what it's all about. And then of course there is Eclipse. And Eclipse has its IDE for C++. So you want to do like Eclipse C++. And here we are, so the CDT. Click on that, then you have what well, you can download right here. And it's free, it's cross-platform. Eclipse is also one that I could not get debugging to work. And I think it's probably more rare that you'll run into that scenario. Again, that's just on a Mac. Um, I think for most people, they're going to have, they're not going to have these kinds of issues trying to get things to work. So ultimately, what I settled on after I did the code signing on the GDB is NetBeans. And I'm just going to do NetBeans C++ and go into that one. So here it is. This is what I will be using, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, for the course, it doesn't really matter what IDE you use because I'm not going to try and exploit features specifically of that IDE. The important thing is to see how we use header files, create classes, syntax, different things like that that are C++ language specific. So the IDE is just a tool and I'm not going to make it the center point or requirement or anything like that. So you can choose your own IDE. So what I'm going to do now is show you a walkthrough of NetBeans. All right, so I am going to start up NetBeans. Here we go. This is another issue you may see with NetBeans, or at least I see it. It's around the JDK, so the Java Development Kit. And I have it installed, but I run into this message for whatever reason when I'm starting NetBeans. And it's just related to some particular NetBeans modules which I'm not concerned about, so I just disable modules and continue, and that beans will load fine after that. All right, so this is the IDE. You can see on the left side, I've got a project that is loaded that I was using earlier, so your projects will appear here. All your projects, they kind of cascade into this right here, so it's really easy to access them. What I'm gonna do is create a new project so we can just see how this works. So I'm just gonna do File, New, and I am going to select application, next. So I'm just going to select a name for this of test. And let's see, I guess I'll do a test two. And then finish. And here we are with my test two. So it's broken out really nice as to how everything in here is going to get separated, the various files. So all the files are going to be CPP. And if I open this, I've got my main CPP, and I'll just close this other one. And this is just a basic file. Um, there's nothing else in here that we need to be concerned about at this point. So the CPP file gets compiled into the end result, which is an EXE, an executable. To run this file, I can go up here, click on this green arrow. That will run my project, and that's finished. Now, a lot of the times what you're going to want to do is build your project, and you have a build right here, and then you have a clean and a build. So if I just do the build, um, that, it's not going to execute anything, but that just gets the latest of my changes and puts them into the executable. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and change this up a little bit and do a, a simple hello world, and it's going to be a C out, and I'll say hello world. Save that and do a semicolon to terminate my line. So this is the simplest of the simple, and we'll go through this again, but just to show how to get up and going with NetBeans. So this file is saved, and if I run this file, notice this build is gonna fail here. And the reason why it's failing is because I need an include at the top for IO stream. So I'm gonna add IO stream, save, and run. That's going to run, and there's my hello world just putting out into the console. So that's about it. We're going to get into this deeper when we get into the language fundamentals, but that should give you an idea of what's going on with NetBeans. And one more thing, if I go ahead and click right here, I'm setting a breakpoint. Notice this one over here, this arrow with this piece of paper that's kind of torn. That's the debugger, so if I run that, we stop right there. 
and I can go ahead and step through by using these commands over here. So it's step over, step into, step out. So we'll see these get used more. So I'll just step over and let this line execute. And then eventually it runs through. So I'll just let that go. And there's my hello world. And I'll just click, remove that. Let's see, there we are. And that's about it. So an overview of NetBeans, again, this is free, runs on Windows, Linux, and also Mac.